Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Witness and I'm your host, Katrina Hussain. Today we're going to talk about an issue that we have touched on frequently in the past. But unfortunately, the government of Pakistan has failed to respond. It is not a difficult task. It doesn't require a parliamentary majority. It doesn't even require a parliamentary resolution. All it needs is for someone to care. I'm talking once again about the fact that domestic child labor, children working in the home, the homes of people you and I probably know, probably working in the homes of people who are maybe related to us, working in the homes of the rich and powerful. Yet there is no protection for these children under Pakistani law. It doesn't need a new law. It needs a minor change in a schedule, which can actually be done by a simple notification. So why then is the government of Pakistan oblivious to this desperate need for change? Modern slavery, slavery in the 21st century. Is it acceptable to us? Yet we find ways to condone and in some way facilitate children working in our homes. Why is that? What does it take for people to understand that this is not just a crime, well, legally not yet, but it is a moral crime. It is a crime against humanity. In my opinion, and you can dispute this, I think it is akin to literal destroying of a child's life. And sometimes a life taken is real as well. Do you remember what happened in Lahore in August? A 12-year-old boy, Taki Usman, originally from Chinyot, was beaten to death. Reportedly, because the case is now under investigation, we know that Taki Usman died. We know he was beaten to death and the murder weapon was a bat. The police have accused the employer of this child, a woman, for having killed him. The alleged reported reason for the murder of Taki Usman was that he neglected to feed the family pet, the dog. To a lot of people, that's not a very big reason for someone to be beaten to death. I say there is no reason to do that. In fact, there's no reason to employ a child at all. And if the child does something wrong, it is your fault if you're employing that child. So a child working in a household is not protected under the law until he or she is brutalized, beaten, has visible signs of being beaten, or is dead. That's the only time the law acts. So why don't we protect our children? This is something that everybody needs to think about. This is our topic for today, and allow me to introduce my guests here in the studio. My first guest is Mr. Mohammad Sefala Chaudhry. He's a senior program officer for the International Labour Organization here in Islamabad. My second guest today is Sama Manila. She's a human rights activist, and she has recently produced a documentary on domestic child labor. We are going to show you some clips of that as well. And my third guest in the studio is advocate Anis Chilani. He is a founder for the Society for the Protection of the Rights of the Child. He's a human rights activist. He's a lawyer. And Mr. Jilani has possibly been single-handedly spearheading this campaign along with his colleagues and friends who support this initiative. But sadly, we are far too few people. And we need each and every person who is watching this program today to join in and condemn this form, contemporary form of slavery in our homes. Uh, Ms. Manila, I know you've been working as far extensively. The Pakistan Army has set up a unit there to try and you know, deal with the children who, are, who have been drawn into that conflict, but that's a topic for another day. What mm -hmm. I really want to talk to you about, it's so easy to identify children in a hazardous environment. Obviously, when we talk about suicide bombers being under the age of 18, we talk about children not working in factories. Yeah. When it comes to domestic child labor, children mm -hmm. working in people's <coughs> houses, yeah. it becomes gray. It yeah. becomes blurred. Yeah. Why? Uh, because, uh, Katrina, the problem is that this specific form of work, this is happening inside a home. Hmm. And that's what makes it a hidden form of uh, exploitation. Hmm. Because the voices of these children remain unheard. These children remain invisible. We don't know what sort of exploitation are they experiencing. So that's what really makes it uh, one of the worst forms of child labor and then on a larger scale on a larger picture child domestic labor is 
you know, not even considered as a form of labor. That's my problem. Yeah. What, 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 is, what makes people defend it? And I've spoken to people who would normally, you know, say, no, children shouldn't work in factories or yeah. whatever. But when it comes to children working in the home, yeah. they try to find excuses for it. Yeah. Or they actually believe yeah. that it's okay for children to work in the home. Why do you think that's uh, Because there are quite a few myths that are connected to this form of employment. Like one of the most common ones is that it's a safe form of employment. Right. Uh, the employers would tell you that we treat this child as a part of our family, yet the child is not going to a school. There are no working timings for this mm -hmm. child. The child either sleeps on the floor of a kitchen mm -hmm. or um, um, on terrace. Like the way this child is treated, come on, let's yeah. not, you know, be in... In any doubt about it. Exactly. If you really are treating that child like a member of your own family, does he have his own bedroom? Yeah, does yeah. he or she go to school? Exactly. Does he or she get toys and just help out in light work like a child would help his, his or her own mother? Absolutely. Um, so let's not keep up this yeah. myth that the child is a member of our family. We treat that child um, um, you know, differently from the way we treat Absolutely. our own. Absolutely. And Katrina, the child is being exploited economically psychologically sexually like when i made this documentary i interviewed children from all over pakistan like from karachi from mardan from quetta and uh, the kind of physical abuse that these children experience beating and beating and you know verbal abuse and the kind of neglect that almost each and every child experiences it's unfortunate that we don't put this form of exploitation on our priority uh, in this agenda. Um, Ms. Manila, this, you know, it makes me so angry. I mean, I have publicly said this. I have stormed up to people in restaurants and said, you yeah. know, why is this child being treated differently? But one other really important issue. A lot of people tell me that, fine, it's employers. What about the parents who send their children into servitude? Mm -hmm. How much are they to blame? Uh, uh, Katrina, financial constraints, like when I interviewed the parents, that was one of the main reasons. But the thing is that we have uh, created this demand for child domestic labors. That's why the parents are also interested in employing their children. The day we stop employing these children as domestic servants, they won't be won't have that option Exactly. And uh, again, going back to the myth, like we keep saying that we are helping these poor families, let's accept it. We are actually perpetuating poverty by employing these children. Yeah. Because this kind of chores... The cycle of poverty continues. Exactly. The kind of chores that these children are forced to do from morning till night are like meaningless, tedious, uh, uh, monotonous chores. Uh, sweeping, mopping, going to the shop for groceries, these are not skills that are going to help these children no. in future. Exactly. So again, there's another myth. And going back to this phenomenon of uh, uh, seeing children in restaurants, uh, I hear people, my own friends, telling me that we don't uh, keep children as child domestic labor. But do we ever go up to those families in a restaurant when we watch them gobbling double cheeseburgers while, you know, a little, little child is child. sitting there? I know I, you've done that. I've done once. It. I walked up and to them and said, that I was told the family said the child ate at home. Yeah. I said, oh, did the child leave his heart at home as well? Exactly. So we don't, that yeah. It's a child. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, where is this? Exactly. You've done it because you feel for these children angry, yeah. passionately. But the thing is that we have to see where do we stand when it comes to this issue yeah. as a society? We have to question uh, what exactly are we doing to perpetuate this, you know, exploitation that these children are experiencing. So, in uh, you know, because we were all at a conference uh, yeah. recently on this issue and uh, I did say this and somebody yes. got up from the audience and said you're wrong. You know, you have no right to humiliate people in public or to tell them that they don't. Yeah. Um, do we do we have that right to walk up to people and say you know what you're doing is wrong? Exactly, and uh, uh, we are. You know that's exactly why I was interested in making this documentary, mm. and Spark has helped me in 
doing that. How is it to, to get access to these children? It was very difficult, Katrina. Tell us a little bit about making of this documentary. I mean, I can't imagine where I've tried to butt in, you know, where child labor situations yeah, are involved. Yeah. I've been chased away. So yeah. how, how hard was it to make this documentary? Uh, it was extremely difficult, but uh, uh, luckily, like, Spark has um, been working in far-off areas, and they have, you know, uh, uh, people working in these areas. They mm -hmm. have contact with parents. So through them, I was able to get uh, closer to these children and their families. That really helped me a lot. But again, the, it was very challenging to uh, get the consent of the parents because it could be dangerous for them. Making the child uh, feel would be comfortable. Why dangerous for the parents? Uh, because they can't afford to, you know, make the employer Antagonize uh, yeah, the exactly, people. Yeah. Now, here's another tough part, of course. How many, uh, how, did you get a sense that the parents were aware that their children were working in an environment not conducive to their health and happiness? Uh, even if they were aware, Katrina, there's this uh, kind of helplessness that they talk about. They say, yes, we know it's very difficult for our child, but we have no other option. We have no other option. Yeah. Okay, before I sign off for the program, uh, there's one group that has not been heard in this program, and that's the children and their parents. And their voice has been provided to us by Summer Manila. So let's hear what the people, the victims, have to say. <laughs> फिर वो डांटते थे बोलते थे अभी यहीं पे सो जाओ टेरेस में चिप करके सो जाओ उन्होंने मेनु 10 दिन बाद इतला देती है कि बच्चे दो में गायब हो गए हैं टमाटर में मारते थे हम डंडा ऐसे जो पाइप होता है वो फेंक देता है नाले में मेरे को पता है पड़ेगी मेरे को यही मिस्त्री वाले पापे लावरस में लास पोजे द लो मो मिस्त्री ने वकाले उस पापे लास बुरस में लास उस पोजे रो आये हम ची बस दम स्कूल जा ची बस पूर्ता वाला हम जा मो तो बजा लास है मो जो स्कूल गया जलाव को अर वक्त के खत के दो वो ची लग कर दादा का मेरे शुभम अब मेरा लग बस भी अब डेरा खा पो अल तो ईद के मौके में मैं गया था एक मर्तबा उनसे लेने के लिए मैंने कहा बच्चा दे दो मैं ईद कराऊं जाके घर में दूसरे बच्चे भी हैं ये भी उनके साथ ईद करेगा तो उन्होंने नहीं दिया भाग इसलिए क्योंकि वो मारती भी थी और काम भी कराती थी बैठने नहीं देती थी स्कूल स्कूल स्लम स्कूल वाली नो उर्दू बारिया इंग्लिश पढ़ाते थे जिससे सबक वाली व्यापार सब पूछ उचे दाकार में रिसके and as I come to the end of this program, um, you heard what the victims have to say about their situation. Think about this issue deeply, please. It is an issue that needs your attention. But before I close the program, I'd like to thank my guests, Mohammed Sefullah Chaudhry, Summer Manila, whom I thank also for the, her documentary, and I hope we can show the documentary in its entirety at some point, and Advocate Anis Jalani for having joined me in today's very important program. And I will leave you with the images of the children who work and children who should really be in school. Katrina Hassan saying, Khadafis, Prophet